The objectives of this presentation are to discuss the differences between hydrophilic and lipophilic statins, and to highlight the clinical findings on the use of each statin type. Moreover, we will review the use of patavastatin and its advantages, given that it is the least lipophilic statin. Statins are spread out across the spectrum from most hydrophilic to most lipophilic. As you can see in this slide, rosuvastatin and pravastatin are the only two statins which are hydrophilic. On the other hand, patavastatin, fluvastatin, atorvastatin, lovastatin, and simvastatin are all lipophilic, with simvastatin being the most lipophilic and patavastatin being the least lipophilic. The main differences between hydrophilic statins and lipophilic statins are highlighted here. Hydrophilic statins are water-soluble, thus requiring active transport to be transported through cell membranes. Moreover, they are liver-specific and display more active renal secretion. Lipophilic statins are fat-soluble and thus pass through cell membranes more readily through passive diffusion. They are also widely distributed across different tissues and are mainly excreted by the liver. You will also note that lipophilic statins, with patavastatin as the exception, are metabolized through the CYP450 enzymes. Clinical studies have compared hydrophilic to lipophilic statins in terms of their efficacy. A meta-analysis of eight randomized control trials have shown similar efficacy of both statin categories in coronary artery disease patients. Another study has shown that the one-year outcomes of hydrophilic and lipophilic statins are similar in patients with acute myocardial infarction. Studies investigating the effects of statins on liver function have shown that high-dose hydrophilic statins significantly increase the incidence of transaminase elevation and liver toxicity. On the other hand, high-dose lipophilic statins have been associated with increased risk of CK elevation. Lipophilic statins may have adverse metabolic consequences. Patavastatin was first introduced in Japan in 2003. It was then approved in the United States by the FDA as patavastatin calcium in 2009. The patavastatin molecule has a unique structure, which contributes to a high affinity for HMG-CoA reductase and has effects on LDLC and HDLC, and has reduced potential for certain drug-to-drug -drug interactions. As mentioned earlier, patavastatin is the least lipophilic statin, and this may provide an advantage for the following reasons. First, patavastatin has an adequate half-life, allowing the statin to maintain continual HMG-CoA reductase inhibition using a practical dosing schedule. Patavastatin has also been shown to raise adiponectin levels, which consequently lowers insulin resistance and improves insulin secretion. Patavastatin shares advantages with statins from both hydrophilic and lipophilic statin families, including reducing LDLC and increasing HDLC levels, as well as reducing the potential for certain drug-to-drug -drug interactions. It is also important to note that the myalgia rates with patavastatin at the highest dose of 4 mg are only 3.1%. Important safety information for Zipitamag pitavastatin tablets. Indications and usage. Zipitamag is indicated as an adjunctive therapy to diet in adult patients with primary hyperlipidemia or mixed dyslipidemia to reduce elevated total cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein cholesterol or LDLC, apolipoprotein B, triglycerides, and to increase high-density lipoprotein cholesterol or HDLC. The effect of Zipitamag on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality has not been determined. Contraindications Zipitamag is contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to product components, in patients with active liver disease, which may include unexplained persistent elevations in hepatic transaminase levels, in women who are pregnant or may become pregnant, in nursing mothers, or in co-administration with cyclosporin. Warnings and Precautions Myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Risk factors include age 65 and greater, renal impairment, inadequately treated hypothyroidism, concomitant use of certain drugs, and higher doses of zipitamag. Zipitamag is contraindicated in patients taking cyclosporin and not recommended in patients taking gemfibrozil. 
The following drugs, when used concomitantly with zipitimab, may also increase the risk of myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Lipid-modifying dosages of niacin of greater than 1 gram per day, vibrates, and colchicine. Discontinue zipitimab if markedly elevated CK levels occur or myopathy is diagnosed or suspected. Temporarily discontinue zipitimab in patients experiencing an acute or serious condition at high risk of developing renal failure secondary to rhabdomyolysis, such as sepsis, shock, severe hypovolemia, major surgery, trauma, severe metabolic, endocrine, or electrolyte disorders, or uncontrolled epilepsy. Inform patients of the risk of myopathy and rhabdomyolysis when starting or increasing zipitimab dosage. Instruct patients to promptly report any unexplained muscle pain, tenderness, or weakness, particularly if accompanied by malaise or fever. Immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy, or IMNM. There have been rare reports of IMNM, an autoimmune myopathy associated with statin use. IMNM is characterized by proximal muscle weakness and elevated serum creatine kinase, which persist despite discontinuation of statin treatment positive anti-HMG-CoA reductase antibody, muscle biopsy showing necrotizing myopathy, and improvement with immunosuppressive agents. Hepatic dysfunction. Increases in serum transaminases can occur. Rare post-marketing reports of fatal and non-fatal hepatic failure have occurred. Consider liver enzyme testing before initiating therapy, and is clinically indicated thereafter. If serious hepatic injury with clinical symptoms and or hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice occurs, promptly discontinue zipitimab. Increases in hemoglobin A1C and fasting serum glucose levels. Increases of each have been reported with statins, including zipitimab. Optimize lifestyle measures, including regular exercise, maintaining a healthy body weight, and making healthy food choices. Adverse reactions. The most frequent adverse reactions with a rate of greater than 2% are myalgia, back pain, diarrhea, constipation, and pain in the extremities. This is not a complete list of all reported adverse events. For additional information, please refer to full prescribing information. You're encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov forward slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088.